In this video, we will be looking at angles in alternate segments. In the diagram below, there is a chord TC and there is a tangent AB. There is a segment that contains the angle formed between the chord and the tangent, the shaded segment. This segment is said to be alternate to the other segment of the circle, the segment. Now, our theorem is saying that the angle between the tangent, this angle right here, and the chord is equal to the angle subtended by the chord, the chord TC, in the alternate segment. So here is the alternate segment, and here is the angle. Now, to prove that, Let's say that the angle here is x1 and the angle here is x2. Our first step is to draw a diameter that passes through the center and touches the point of contact, which is T. I'm going to call this point D. I'm going to call this E. I'm going to join D and C together. And I'm going to call the angle formed here at D, M. This angle M is in the same segment with X2, based on our previous understanding. So I can say that M is equal to X2. The reason for that is because they are in the same segment. Now, let's come down here to the point of contact. There are a lot of things going on around here. First, we have OT, which is the radius. We have AB, which is the tangent. And then, of course, we know that OT is perpendicular to AB from the previous term that we've learned. And so, we can say that the whole of angle O T, B, the whole of the angle here is 90 degrees. And then the remaining angle here, which is DTC, DTC, is going to be the subtraction of X1 from 90 degrees. So I can write here as 90 minus X1. So our DTC is 90 minus X1. Again, we notice that angle DCT, the angle right here, is 90 degrees. The reason for that is because it is angle in a semicircle. So that is 90. Now let's add up all of the angles we have in triangle DCT. In triangle DCT, the sum of all the angles, the first angle, M, plus the second angle right here, 90 minus X1, the third angle, which is 90, 90, all of this sum up to 180 degrees. The reason is because this is um, angles in a triangle. Now let's add this up. We have M minus X1 plus 180 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So 180 degrees cancels out. So we have M minus X1 is equal to 0. So that's M equals X1. You would recall right here that M and X2 are the same. And now the same M is equal to X1. So I can basically say that the angle here is X1. So we have been able to prove that X1 is equal to X2. Considering the second possible case, 
that is angle ATC. Going back to the first instance, here we considered angle C, T, B, and then we saw how X1 is equal to X2, angle at the alternate segment. Here we looked at the angle in the minus segment versus the one in the alternate segment, which is the major segment. In this case, it's going to be major segment versus the angle in the minor segment from that point of view. Right, so we're going to see how this angle right here is equal to the angle subtended in this alternate segment. So I'm going to call this angle E. So let's say this is X1, this is X2. Now, we're going to do the same thing we did here how, when we try to draw D to T passing through the center. We do the same here as well. So we we'll call this D, then we join D to C. Now from here, we notice a few things that angle D, C, T, is equal to 90 degrees, the angle right here. The reason is, this is um, angle in a semicircle. I'm just going to write semicircle. Now that is settled. Again, we notice that OT is perpendicular to AB. The same thing that happened here. So which means that the angle here, the whole of the angle here is 90. Now to obtain the angle here, right here, that is angle O, T, C, we'll have to subtract because the whole of this is X1, so 90 is out of it, so you're going to be having X1 minus 90 degrees. So here it's going to be X1 minus 90 degrees. All right. Now, one last thing. Because we are trying to establish something within the triangle D, C, T. If you look at X2 and the angle here, the angle at D, the uh, opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. And opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Okay, so let me call this M for now. Now let's add it up. Okay, so considering triangle D, C, T, let's pick the first angle, M, plus the second angle, X1, minus 90 degrees, and then this other one here, 90 degrees, is equal to 180 degrees. This is sum of angle and a triangle. Now we have M1, sorry, M plus X1, is equal to 180 degrees. Remember that M plus X2 is equal to 180 degrees. The reason for that is that they are opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral. So which is which are basically supplementary. So which means that your M is equal to 180 minus X2. So when we replace what we have here with that, we have 180 degrees minus x2 plus x1 as equal to 180 degrees. So this, when it goes here, becomes zero. So we have x1 equals, when this goes here, it becomes x2. So we've been able to establish that the angle uh, you have right here, which is between the tangent and the chord, is equal to the angle subtended by the chord in the alternate segment. Now, let's look at just one example. In this example, we're told that TA is a tangent to circle ABC at A. And uh, TAC is 58 degrees, just like we've seen, TAC. Then BCA is 65 degrees. BCA is 65 degrees. We have to find the size of BAC. So our goal is to find the angle here. So how do we do that? The only thing we just have to do is to find the angle that is in alternate segment. How do we apply that? So um, angle C, 
80 is equal to the angle here. So this right here and this right here are equal. A, B, C, which is equal to 58 degrees. So this is going to be 58 degrees. Okay. Now to find BAC, angle BAC, BAC is already a triangle. BAC is a triangle. Okay. So angle BAC is just going to be 180 degrees minus 58 degrees plus 65 degrees, which is the sum of angles and the triangle. Angle BAC is equal to 180 minus 123 degrees. Angle BAC is equal to 57 degrees. Remember that here they are angles in alternate segments. In alternate segments. Right. So that's it. That's it.